Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's been a minute since I did a Q&A or a girl chat on here. Really, honestly, any YouTube videos. I feel like I haven't um, filmed anything for YouTube in a while. So I'm excited to go through some of the questions that you guys submitted on Instagram story last week. We have some juicy ones and a lot of different topics that we're going to talk about. So grab a little snack or a beverage. I'm going to grab a poppy really quick out of the fridge. I've been on my poppy grind lately. That is the best sound ever. Mmm. All right, let's go sit on the couch. I'm gonna pull up the questions. Let's just get right into it with the most popular question that I've been getting, um, which is how my anxiety journey is going and just my medication in general. Need a little sip for this. So if you're not aware, I started taking anxiety medication. I'm on Zoloft about three months ago. Long story short, I was just feeling extreme anxiety like waking up with debilitating anxiety every single day um to the point where it was interfering with my day-to-day -day life and just being able to work and be my normal self so i decided it was time to seek out um an ssri which was so scary i'm the type of person that i don't even like to take advil if i have a headache like <laughs> if i have pms like period cramps I will just stick it out and see how long I can suffer for. Don't ask me why, it's like girl math, but I was so nervous about taking a synthetic medication and just feeling like I was gonna be dependent on it um, for the rest of my life or just for the indefinite future, but I've been on it for three months now and it has seriously changed my life. I'm feeling so much better. I've been going to therapy. I've been doing other things alongside the medication, but it truly has like changed my life. And the best way that I describe it is it basically feels like the wires have just in your brain have been untangled and then rewired so that you just feel a little bit lighter and more at peace. And for me, like the that and then the other thing that I really notice is I just let things like roll off my back. I think the saying is like, it's like, let your, let the water roll off your back like a duck. I could have just made that up, but it's something like that where it's just like things that I used to fester on or would be super ruminating and I could not let go. I'll just be able to like tell myself it's okay. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. And I'm not constantly fearing for the worst or anticipating things that 99% of the time aren't even going to happen. So I'm feeling so much better. Um, finally feeling like myself again. It's such a relief because I was in a really dark place for a little bit, like back in March. Um, and I've never really dealt with depression, but I think that when you're having this severe anxiety, it's hard not to start to feel like a significant impact in your mood because um, like how are you supposed to feel your best when you're anxious all the time? Like, and you start to get in your head and that like, ultimately is gonna impact your mood and start making you not feel good on a day-to-day -day basis. That's where I'm at. I'm feeling really, really good. I'm proud of myself, been putting in the work, and um, yeah, I'm feeling good. So thank you for asking. Everyone's been so sweet and like so supportive and just I've gotten a lot of um, genuine, sweet, helpful messages and just people reaching out, so thank you. Did you ever use dating apps before you met your husband? I... This was like eight years ago, just to like preface it. I downloaded Bumble after college. And honestly, the reason why I downloaded it was to see if Connor was even on there. I like, <laughs> like so crazy. We weren't like dating or anything yet, but we had been talking and hooking up. And I was like, I want to download Bumble and like see if he's on there, like talking to other girls, which like he totally could have been or should have been because we weren't officially together or anything um but I'd be at work and I'm like swiping through like, <laughs> like is he on here is he on here 
Um, and then he was. I ended up finding him and I was like, oh, I don't like this. And I think I like messaged with like a couple guys, but I never went on a date or anything. Um, but it was so different back then. Like now, if I was single, I totally would use dating apps. I, they're so much more like, normalized and common. Yeah, like a lot of my friends have met, met their significant other on like dating apps before. So yeah, that's my like only time really using it. So like I have, but like, I feel like it doesn't really count. Did you ever feel pressure to get engaged by a certain age? Um, I honestly didn't really feel pressured, uh, but like I was ready for sure. I also think it just depends who your like circle is, immediate circle, and when they're getting engaged because I was one of the first people in my both high school and college friend groups to get engaged and so I didn't necessarily feel like I was behind or like that, that there was this timeline that I was falling short of and I think that's because so many of my, pe my friends and um, people that I'm just with on a day to day weren't making me feel that pressure but I definitely was excited about it. I think if Connor had waited like another um, maybe like a year I would have started to feel that pressure um, but it's interesting because I always used to say like this is when I was in college I didn't know any better um, I always used to say like I wanted to be married by 25 and have two kids by 30 I'm 30 and I don't have any kids <laughs> I am married so check there but I got married at 29 and I've never really felt like even with my own timeline, I haven't really felt pressured because it all ends up working out how you want it to. Um, and who wants to like plan for everything? If you're planning for everything, then you don't leave any room for like excitement and learning and like adaptability. So um, no, I don't feel pressured and everyone's on their own timeline. Like there's people that are 40 and meet their the love of their life get married and have a kid within a year and it ends up being the most amazing thing And then there's people that get married when they're 18 So you really like cannot compare yourself to other people's timelines and everything It's gonna work out how it should for you At least that's what I tell myself Honest question about boobs. Do you worry about BII not judging considering it myself? I got my boobs done six years ago the best investment I ever made um, and BII wasn't really like there wasn't as much awareness about it which is breast implant illness um, for anyone that doesn't know but um, like six years ago people weren't really talking about it as much as they are now and to my understanding I could be wrong but just from like the research and little reading that I've done I don't think that there's a way to prove you have BII until you actually remove your implants and even then sometimes you can't even prove it like and some of the symptoms that are so common are like fatigue headaches things like that that for me I haven't noticed anything um but it's something that is now top of mind, just that people are talking about it a little bit more. And so I feel like I have to just be cognizant of it. And like, I am pretty like good at kind of like checking my boobs and making sure that um, they just feel like normal, um, which I feel like everyone should do, like check themselves and make sure you don't have like lumps or anything. It's like something on my radar, but it's not something I've really ever been concerned about. Um, but it is interesting, the more information and like facts that come out, I like, could totally change my mind, so don't hold me to it. But as of now, I feel good about them. Someone on here also asked uh, how to save for cosmetic surgery. And I feel like that's kind of like just how to save for anything that you want to prioritize. If it's something that's really important to you, I would figure out a percentage of your monthly income or your just paycheck that you can set aside every single month, whether it's setting up a separate account that you can just put money into and like pretend like, it's not even there you can't touch it until you reach that certain like amount that whatever the procedure would be like i said this really goes for anything that you're saving up for it's not to be a cosmetic procedure but um set aside just like a little bit of money and it if it means not going out one night and like not spending 60 dollars on drinks so that you can put money into a savings for whatever it is that you want then do that but when i tell you when i walked into the um plastic surgeon's office to like give them the check for my boobs i felt like such a baller i walked in wrote a check i was 23 24 
was the like biggest purchase I had ever made um, in my whole life. And I hand them a check and it felt, I felt like such a baller and it felt so good um, paying for something that I was like really, really excited about. So whatever it is, definitely just try and set aside a little bit of money each month. How long did it take you to go from just starting Sweat and Tell to quitting your corporate job? And then follow up question is how to know it's time to quit corporate. So Jacqueline and I started Sweat and Tell in 2018 when we were both working at Howe's um, post-graduation. And I was at Howe's for another year after that. Then I moved to Salesforce. So it was four and a half years from starting Sweat and Tell until when I was able to quit and do it full time. So it wasn't like something I just rushed into. It definitely took like a lot of time to make sure that it made sense financially and just um, like career wise. But yeah, four and a half years and I can kind of talk a little bit about how I knew it was time to leave corporate. So I struggled a little bit with having a lot of my self worth and just personal value tied to my job and my career a lot of my identity was like really there was a lot of weight on being in like the business world being in tech being successful at like at this amazing company that I was working at. I was working at Salesforce at the time and I had a lot of pride in being at that company I loved the team that I worked with and so it was hard for me to want to leave um, however I knew that it was time to do sweat and tell full-time because I was honestly my workload was crazy I was working like 45 to 50 hours a week with Salesforce we were in our busy season um, Q4 if you're in sales like you know how insane it is trying to close things out at the end of the fiscal year so that was nuts I was working like yeah probably that time like 50 hours a week and then with sweat and tell and then Jax and I were also finalizing everything for Jay and trying to get that launched um, between sweat and tell and Jay was like another 20 to 30 hours a week so I was easily working 70 to 80 hours a week and that in and of itself is crazy and I, I totally get having to pay your dues. However, I was starting to miss out on things that were really important like social events and um, quality time with honestly like my husband, family, just friends because I was always working and when I wasn't working I was exhausted or frustrated or irritable because I did not feel like there was enough hours in the day. So I was just getting pulled in way too many different directions. I ultimately was like, I need to make a plan. I need to make a change. And I, I always knew I wanted to do something entrepreneurial. And I like kind of struggled, like how I said a little bit about my identity being tied to this like cushy corporate job where I'm getting paid well and all the benefits and everything. However, I was re I was really excited to like move on to like the more entrepreneurial path and I think having Jay and getting that all launched helped catapult me that direction. I honestly think if it feels like it is negatively impacting your happiness, you don't feel um like you're challenging yourself, you don't feel like you're excited to go into the office or open up your laptop and like work sometimes sucks. Like let's be honest. I saw this TikTok that was like, whoever, um, whoever fought for women's rights to work, like, which is so funny because it's like, <laughs> good thing we can work, but also like it, you don't always have to love your job, but to give some more tangible advice to people that are listening that maybe you're just stuck at your corporate job that you aren't loving right now, that's okay. Like there are so many opportunities out there that you can take advantage of. You're not stuck. I would just say, come up with a plan and don't be afraid to make a change. Like you're capable, you're smart, you're a badass bitch. Whoever's listening, like if you're part of our community, I know that you're a good one, you're a real one. So make a plan. Um, I would make a financial plan. I would make a goal oriented plan on like where you're like, I'd say one, five, 10 year goals. And um, that can also be like professional, but also personal. And then I would start reaching out to other companies, seeing what else is out there, getting things on your radar and just start like doing, doing the legwork to make a change. Um, and sometimes just like seeing what else is out there might give you a little bit of a pers different perspective because honestly, like we all fall victim to 
grass it isn't always greener on the other side so you could go down this path of like interviewing for other jobs or um just you know other opportunities out there and be like wait i actually have it really good i would just explore take your time but try and create a plan um, but yeah you're not stuck and in general if you feel like you are sacrificing your happiness and um and your values are like what you're passionate about for your job, then make a change. You got it. When do you want to start having babies? Are you trying to conceive? Do you want kids? Lots of those questions. Um, yeah, we do want kids. Soon. Hopefully soon. It is crazy that as a woman, your whole life, or not your whole life, but ever since you start having sex, um, you are trying to prevent pregnancy. And you think about it a lot, like we get on birth control and we're extra careful. And then the second you start trying, you realize that it actually is a lot harder to get pregnant than you are expecting. Not always, but sometimes or oftentimes that can be the case. Um, so yeah, we do want kids soon. I don't want to like overshare on this topic because um, I feel like it's kind of like uncharted territory and I just am like honestly in the process of navigating it. Um, but we do want kids soon and we are doing everything we can to hopefully make it happen. And I know that it's going to happen when it is meant to be. Um, I just keep telling myself that. I think it's also hard to not get in your head and like be like, is something wrong with me? Is there a reason why I'm not getting pregnant? Um, so yeah, I feel like that also was contributing a little bit to my anxiety. But again, I feel like I don't want to like overshare on this, that specific topic. However, we do get questions about body image, which is like leads me into a couple of the questions are like, how do you deal with bad body image days? or what do you do if you're feeling like self-critical and that's something that like i definitely want to talk about um because it's also like tied to just i think preparing your body for pregnancy um so i've talked to like some hormone specialists and also done a lot of my own research and a lot of specialists say that there is a specific body fat percentage that you're supposed to have as a woman in order to ovulate um effectively and just correctly again this is all like nuance it doesn't apply to every single person like however i'm reading it and like applying it to myself and i'm sharing it because it might be helpful i've kind of like realized in the last few months that my like thinnest body isn't my optimal body just in general but then also tying it back to like preparing my body to bring a life into the world which like makes me like emotional um but yeah my like thinnest body is not my optimal body and like that is something that i've been like really working on i've been working to actually gain weight um which i've never really like had to gain weight before um, and increase my body fat percentage and that has been a whole honestly like for lack of a better word just kind of a mind fuck um especially being in like the fitness space and then you pair fitness and social media together and it's like a recipe for disaster if you don't actively work on like your self-confidence and positive self-talk um so that's been really interesting i've like gained a significant in my opinion a significant amount of weight um it might not be no noticeable to like the just average person or somebody that sees me but to myself like it's been like a interesting adjustment um and yeah i'm like realizing i put a lot of pressure on myself to look a certain way because of my job like more so in the fitness space i think i like hold myself to the standard where if i don't look a certain way or if my abs aren't showing in like a workout video and it sounds so stupid when i say it out loud but if like my abs aren't showing in a workout video are people gonna think like i'm not as credible like do i need to look like lean and have x percent body fat in order for like people to think like our workouts are effective like there's just all of these distorted thinking patterns that go into my head so i've really been focusing on 
like positive self-talk and like what my body does for me that has nothing to do with the vanity side of things um so yeah that's been like interest an interesting journey for sure it's like that's not what people care about people's bodies are the least important thing about them um and so i think just like transitioning into like my 30s and this new just chapter um i'm really trying to be like uh focus on like bo body positivity and as you get older your body changes too it just shifts it's different it doesn't look like it did when you were 16 like and it shouldn't like your body's supposed to change the last thing again totally going on a tangent can you tell that i had therapy this week <laughs> um the other thing too um with like body positivity that i think is a good takeaway for anyone listening is like if you're having a negative thought like let's say as an example you're like looking in the mirror you're like my arms look big i don't like how they looked in that photo whatever it is um i like to picture my younger self looking in a mirror and saying those things and then my older self like me standing there and what i would say to that younger person like you have such a amazing body like your body is so capable of being able to do x y and z um like if you play sports or if you're active or if you walk a lot, like focus on what your body can do for you and like you're um intelligent you're hardworking, you're so smart you're compassionate like all the other things that you would tell your younger self if she had those same same thoughts it's like that's what you should be telling yourself when you're having those negative um body image days or just moments and you just have to remind yourself all of that so that's kind of my soapbox on body image advice for long-term relationships i like this question because we don't really talk about relationships that much on social media or our like significant other relationships so my husband and i have been together for i think seven years now um and my biggest piece of advice is being able to make your partner feel heard and communicate with them is always better than being right which if you are stubborn like me and like my husband like if you guys are if one is stubborn but especially if both are stubborn i feel like that is the like one hiccup or like bump in the road of, no, of wanting to be right like that is such a common struggle in relationships and it's like being right is the least important thing um and so i tell myself that all the time and it really helps like if you're having a little argument it's like even if you don't agree just be like you know what like i'm sorry just because you're apologizing doesn't mean that you're a bad person or you should feel shame it's like it just means that you're apologizing for how that person was feeling in that moment even if you don't agree so yeah just not always having to be right and that like really applies to anything in life like being able to um learn and move on um obviously like communication which really ties into that if you don't know what your love languages are or your partners then i would definitely take that test like one of them is quality time which is kind of a non-negotiable like in any long-term relationship i feel like you should want to spend quality time with your partner but that's definitely one of mine and i think that like carving out time to spend with your partner and it doesn't have to be some crazy like oh we're going on just a, a vacation us two for a whole week to hawaii it doesn't have to be like that extreme it can be tiny little micro moment moments throughout the day or um routines that you guys set up like as an example i'll just use connor and i it's like we make coffee together every single morning before he leaves for work and before i start working we go on a walk every single night after dinner and so we all not always actually like 95 percent of the time um it's not always perfect like we can't always fit it into the schedule but we really 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 try to prioritize it um and it takes like our walk takes 20 minutes making coffee takes 10 like they're tiny little moments that i feel like since that's like one of my love languages that quality time really makes a big difference to me so 
I would for sure try to figure out what your love languages are. Like there's acts of service, gifts, um, and there's other ones too. I'm like blanking on them, but, um, yeah, I would like definitely just try and carve out some time for one another. Also doing activities together, like being able to get out and experience new things and learn from one another. And um, yeah, it's easy to get stuck in your routine. So just continue feeling like you're dating each other. Get out, try new things, plan fun little dates. Mm. Okay, one more. One more thing is... And this goes for a husband, significant other, or honestly, even friends or family. If there is something that bothers you or just upsets you or frustrates you, within reason, like you don't want to be a naggy bitch wife, but like if there's something that's bothering you, bring it up. Like I am... It's like, I, I am a confrontational person. I feel like that, I was trying to think of another word. I feel like that has a bad connotation, but like, I am like a somewhat confrontational person and it helps so much in my relationships because if there's something that I'm like, that kind of bothered me, like instead of letting it fester and building up resentment, I immediately bring it up and oh, let's bring it up, talk about it, squash it and move on and not think about it again. And so I just feel like with a relationship and like, like I said, this can apply to anything. Like if there's something that's bothering you, bring it up to that person and talk it through. As long as you're coming at it from an angle of wanting to fix it and like being like explaining how like it's negatively affecting you and like coming at it with compassion, then if anything, it's gonna really help to strengthen, like ultimately strengthen your relationships at the end of the day. Like no one has time to like, let that negative energy in talk it through and nine times out of ten or like 9.9 .9 times out of ten you're gonna feel so much better after and it's not even gonna be like whatever as bad as you were anticipating so communicate and then move on go to healthy snack i'm a big snacker i love to do apple nachos so i'll slice an apple really thin and like this way so they're like wide pieces and then i'll drizzle either almond butter or um, peanut butter i'll do some walnuts some slivered almonds a little bit of chocolate chips some cinnamon i'll throw like random stuff on there sometimes if i have like a granola butter or just granola on top um i just load them up they're so good i love those they're also kind of like a treat um i love having popcorn i do that a lot like lots of fruit, veggies, dips. I'm a big tuna salad person. I just had some um, tuna salad on Ella's Flats crackers because they have protein. So I like to do like the, a couple of the Ella's Flats with tuna salad or like an egg salad. Um, oh, chomps. I love chomps. My favorite is just the original beef stick. I think it's in the red packaging. Anything lesser evil. I love their stuff. Oh, those hip peas, those are so addicting. They're from Costco. The like puff hip pea chips, they're like probably not that healthy, but they're really good. And yeah, lots of trail mix. I do trail mix a lot. Now that I got my pantry professionally organized, whoa, I think there's just lightning outside. You guys, the weather has been insane. There was an earthquake or a couple earthquakes. Lightning, I think. It rained last night. This is like it's June in California. Like, what are we paying these California taxes for if the weather is like this? Um, but trail mix. So I had a um, professional organizer come to my house and she put all of my like nuts and, and dried fruit and stuff into jars. So it's so, so organized. It's so nice. And I'll just grab like a little bit out of each um, container, mix it all up, do some dark chocolate. And I have trail mix like probably every day. Honestly, I love it. I love it. I love it. Have or would you guys ever do filler? So I have gotten filler in my lips before. I got it actually for the first time in 2020. Some of you guys might remember if you've been around since then. Um, because my lips looked really good when I first got it. And it was literally the, the day before everything shut down. Like the next day, I got an email from work that was like, hey, like don't come into the office. 
and so I had these like juicy just fat lips all, th all through the pandemic when I was staying at my parents house and it ended up spreading to my top lip but I couldn't obviously get it dissolved because everything was closed so I was a little scarred from that I would always tell people that I looked like Bart Simpson <laughs> because I had just like this like beak almost um so kind of scarred me for a few years and I get Botox like I love Botox I want I actually need to go in for an appointment soon um I just want my forehead to look like an ice skating rink and nice and frozen so I get preventative Botox like in my 11s right here and the last time I went in I had her put a couple units of filler in my lips and you actually can't even tell so I honestly in the future like my try it again but it's not like a top priority for me right now and then i also did the skin beef on my neck and then i think it was hyaluronic acid which i think is filler so i have tried filler on my neck too um but i've never done under eye filler or like anywhere else on my face um so yeah but i also like my natural lips and i like natural lips on other people too so no judgment if you love your filler Okay, lots of questions about Nori. You guys, I love her so much. She is the light of my life. She's so cute. She's so freaking cute. Let me grab her. I think she's taking a nap right now. Let me find her really quick. Girl. Oh, I love her. You guys, my heart has... She just woke up from a nap. She's a little grumpy. Um, My heart has quadrupled in size since we got nori like i don't know what we did before her oh she is the love of my life she oh come on <laughs> she's my best friend connor and i always say like we don't know what we did before her she's so goofy she's so fun she's kind of like a dog she plays fetch like She's just so chill. Um, it's funny, she has this like demon hour, that's what we call it, between 9 to 10 p.m. She's an absolute menace, like running around the house, like ears are pointed back. She kind of looks like a little bat or something. Come here. We will literally chase everything and um, she like likes to nibble and like is so playful. We play hide and seek. like. And she just goes absolutely berserk <laughs> at night like when we're trying to go to bed it's so funny but yeah she's the light of my life i love her so much she's so beautiful all right what is next for jay so we have a lot going on actually this year jacqueline and i always say it's kind of funny because as influencers or content creators and then also having um a like business there's so much that we do that like people don't see and so I feel like if there's a day that it's like we don't really post any stories it's like oh like are they even like working but it's like oh no we are we've just been in meetings all day long like with our manufacturer with our consultant with our packaging designer so it's like it's really interesting so there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that I feel like we don't really share or talk about but we have four products that we're working on right now one that should be launching in three to four months another one before the holidays one early next year and then one shortly after that so there are products that we are like so hyped about one of them we've been formulating for over a year and we like have just finally got it right so that's like really really exciting um, and we've been testing it out and using it all the time to make sure that it works we love to be the guinea pigs and then um yeah one of the other ones we're like it's almost almost there so it takes a lot of work i like love that part of my job in being creative getting able to come up with new products and like launch them i think that's like such a fun rewarding aspect um and i feel really lucky to be able to do that but we have a lot going on so we'll keep you posted and hopefully everything goes smoothly and this new product launches in a couple months here. We have like a tentative date. I don't want to share it just in case things um, push because everything always takes longer than you think it does. But yeah, so that's next up for Jay. And yeah, I think that's that's really it. Oh yeah, my camera 
literally just said it's almost out of battery. So let me grab Nori, we can say bye. Come here, baby girl. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Mwah. It's fun to do these little Q&A girl chats, being able to just like share a little bit more, be a little more open. So thank you for watching and let me know if you guys have any other questions, but thank you so much and we'll chat soon. Bye.